Hi, I'm Deke. Welcome to Deke Pod, my series of once every other weekly videos on computer graphics and digital imaging. This is my chance to show you how to emulate the work of one of the world's most famous fine artists without some guy in a tie saying, you can't do that, that's intellectual property. My ass, you can't copyright a technique. And as you'll see, this one was designed to be copied. So put a sock in it, jerks. Today's episode, the Andy Warhol silkscreen effect, in which I show you how to apply just such an effect to an image inside Photoshop. You know what I mean, Marilyn. Now you might look at this and think, what a load of crap. But that was rather the point. Automated assembly line artwork with thrilling variations that only a machine can produce. Perfect fodder for Photoshop. Evil genius, easy target. Before we go any farther, you need to know who we're dealing with. Warhol was the evil genius of the 1960s art world. He founded the factory, for God's sake, as in a staging ground for churning out art. According to the factory, art is a commodity. Think Thomas Kincaid, painter of light, only evil, and sporting a toupee made of silver doll hair. Now you might think, come on, Deke, Warhol was a freaky dude, but he wasn't really evil. Get this. This is a quote. This is Andy Warhol talking. In August 62, I started doing silk screens, says Andy. I wanted something stronger that gave more of an assembly line effect. Assembly line art, evil. When Marilyn Monroe happened to die that month, also known as suicide, I got the idea to make screens of her beautiful face. So a beloved screen icon conveniently offs herself and Warhol exploits her death for personal gain. Evil, genius, evil genius. The Photoshop Factory. Warhol's assembly line approach was designed to remove evidence of the artist from the artwork, and so his techniques were highly reproducible. Hell, I've even heard of Warhol emulation software, but we're gonna do better. We're gonna set things up manually, just as Andy would have, only in Photoshop. And then we'll use automation to create the color variations. We'll start with this lovely photo here, charming couple. They look about 12, and we'll turn them into this, or this, or this. The possibilities are endless. Take some masking, some lassoing, filling with colors, but in the end, you'll have a flexible composition that you can milk till you're blue in the face. The means of shadow production. The first step is to create the posterized shadows, which in the case of Marilyn is that stylized region of blacks. Go to this palette and control or command click on the RGB composite. Now go down to the bottom and click here. You've got yourself an alpha channel. Bolster the edge detail using the high pass filter, then bring up the levels command and punch up the contrast. Your values will vary, so feel free to experiment, but you want posterized, harsh contrast shadows like you're seeing now. Go in with a brush tool and paint away the crap that doesn't seem to be contributing to the detail. We want the faces nice and smooth. Now invert the mask, control or command click on it to load it as a selection, switch palettes, make a new layer, and fill the selection with the desired color. The base detail is set. Paint by numbers. Now let's fill in the areas of color. It's not hard, just a matter of making a new layer, selecting a region with the lasso tool, I recommend Alt or Option clicking to draw a freeform polygon, and filling it with a the color. There's the clothing, here are the faces, this is the hair. Not going for realism, think clown colors. If you want to adhere to the palette of the evil genius himself, watch this. I'll run a Google image search for Warhol Marilyn. Then switch back to Photoshop, get the eyedropper, click anywhere in the active image and drag into the Marilyn window. Release to pick up the color. Now for the makeup. Don't question it. You have to have makeup. Girls, boys, doesn't matter. Eyeshadow and lipstick that covers the teeth. Now put it all together. Add a sky and you get this. I don't like these background blotches, so I'll make yet another layer, select around the blotches, fill with color, and set the layer to a blend mode I almost never use, lighter color. Warhol was big on nudging the color slightly out of register, so add a garish drop shadow effect, convert it to a layer using this command here, and sync it so it's behind the face and hair layers. Going too fast? No, I'm not. I explain everything in glorious, loving, set your own pace detail at my site, deke.com. Maladjustment layers. Warhol frequently handed off his initial silk screens to assistants who would churn out the color variations. We're gonna do that too, only our assistants aren't eccentric bohemians who occasionally pee on the artwork. They're adjustment layers. For example, make a hue sat adjustment layer, send the hues this way, then get this tool and control or command drag to get this effect here. Here's another hue sat adjustment, and another. To get this, I just inverted everything. 
This last one, I kinda went crazy. Added another hue sat layer, inverted a bunch of colors, all kinds of chaos. But regardless, all I'm doing is reworking the layers I already have in place. And with adjustment layers, every modification is non-destructive, so you can change your mind anytime you like. Plus, you can save every variation as an independent layer comp. I ask you, who would not want to do that? Crop in tight on the faces, then combine, and you get this. Print it out huge, and you got yourself a Warhol-like silkscreen that takes up an entire wall. Conclusion. Okay, that was fun. A little intense, but fun. Oh, and that bit about Andy Warhol being evil, not necessarily true. In real life, he was a good Catholic boy who apparently attended Mass almost every day and worked at homeless shelters, which isn't technically evil. Granted, he did exploit the memory of Marilyn Monroe, but I mean, who among us didn't? For a complete analysis of masking, blend modes, adjustment layers, layer comps, and more, check out my books, Photoshop CS4 one-on-one -on -one and Photoshop Channels and Masks one-on-one, -on -one, both at deek.oreilly.com. In time, I will document this very technique in a series of online training videos, much like this one, about which you can learn more at lynda.com slash deek. And to read an article that lays out the entire process, become a member of deek.com. I even show you how to put a flattering spin on the effect, complete with bright eyes and teeth, suitable for framing or cover art. And stay tuned for more videos. I have lots more evil effects to pummel your platinum pop art psyche here at DeekPod.